Um, just want to highlight today's processes, which I'll talk about for the end of the live stream, just to be clear. Um, to actually have someone have a good uh, Q&A afterwards, I think. Okay, let's we can wait for Don. Before we start, we can start. Okay, so you can start live streaming. You do again, are you now? Thank you. So, good morning, everybody. Councillors, staff, and members of the public, and those watching us online. Um, at this point, we have no apologies. We've got Kevin online this morning. Good morning, Kevin. Didn't really give us the loogie. Here it is. Put yourself on silent, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so no apologies, we're all present. Um, so we've got any urgent business, I'm not aware of anything at this point in time. Um, anybody got any declarations of interest <clears throat> today? And then I please have a uh, confirmation of um, last month's week, the 3rd of May. Yeah. I will move that. Thank you, Caleb. Second of Sarah Jane. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? Okay, we'll now move into our um, agenda. Um, so today we've obviously got the five items that we went out for consultation on. Uh, we've had the hearing and we've listened to our submitters in person, those that came in person and presented, and also we read all our written submissions and went through them at the hearing. Um, we asked staff for further information for some of these matters and we adjourned at that point. So we've obviously got some information. So for our deliberations today, we're considering the recommendations and any amendments based on the consultation and the submissions received. And obviously with, the, um, with regard to the information that um, staff have provided us. So with that, we will start with item 7.1, which is the adoption of the Solid Waste Management and Minimisation Bylaw. And with us, we have Louisa, our solid waste manager, Louisa Palmer, and online we've got the Anomia consultant, uh, Lisa E. Good morning, Lisa. So we have um, just a bit of narrative around this one. We obviously had a few um, submissions and just looking at considering um, two points in there that are now attachments of the specifications of the vehicle. You may recall that being discussed. That's on page 12. And the um, on page 16, there was the consideration of the construction waste and the, and the um, plans there. But anyway, open for discussion. Has anybody got any, any comment to make? We have a few submissions on it. We've obviously looked at it. And the vehicle one was a um, interesting <coughs> point to raise. So if there's... Um, yeah, I, I guess the main way that I understood it was, well, the thing that you said that I liked about, um, you know, making the vehicles up to speed off as far as council's concerned was, was the health and safety side of things about how you can't ride on a truck anymore um, and that the vehicle has to be safe for, you know, however the, the truck is being used. I guess the wording that's been changed in this regarding size and description is, um, if I was looking at that, I would maybe consider that to be a little bit vague. Um, or, or if you left that in, maybe it could also be as it meets um, council's health and safety policies. To me, would maybe be better wording around that because that's being specific around what council is trying to get from a vehicle on a contractor. Um, so I don't know. That's that's my two cents about it. I really like the way that you described it. That you know, trucks can't be ridden on anymore. And that's what you're trying to avoid. Um, that was maybe a little bit too vague for me. So can we have some clarification around that, what other bylaws are actually stating in that space? Yeah, for sure. Would you like me to comment on that? Yes, that'd be yeah. great. Thanks, Lisa. OK, so, so just to clarify, the, the intention of the bylaw is just to, just to um, give you the ability 
to set conditions for waste operators. And all the wording in the bylaw is supposed to do is to just give examples of what those conditions might be. So what the, the next step after adopting the bylaw is to put together the schedules to the bylaw. Uh, and this is where all of the detail will be about exactly what those conditions are going to be. And so this is where we'll include the detail around the specifications required for bins, um, you know, any particular collection times that operators need to comply with. And that's where we can go into much more detail about what um, vehicle and service performance requirements we have. All the bylaw really should do is just indicate what those specifications are going to cover. So I don't see any reason why you couldn't add health and safety in there, um, but not having it in there doesn't mean that you can't include it in the uh, schedules to the bylaw. Um, maybe then instead of size weight vehicle, maybe we can put refer to the schedule for, um, you know, what you're talking about, maybe refer to that for more information around the vehicles. Yeah, I, I just know how this got from the discussions that we had, and it was probably, yeah, vague. It, it does already say in the bylaw that the um, that the conditions for licensed operators will be set a, as part of the licensing process, and so I mean it should be quite clear to to waste operators, especially those that work outside the Matamatapiako district and have already experienced this elsewhere, um, that that's how the process will follow. So just clarification of that, is this wording now necessary or not necessary that will be captured in the schedule? Like we, we, we want to be consistent with obviously across districts. We can't be doing specific things in our... Sure. Our mm. I, I, the many, many other bylaws do give examples or kind of general descriptions of what the conditions would cover. So absolutely, if you think it's important to indicate in the bylaw that health and safety is going to be one of the issues that will be covered through the, the schedules and the licensing system, then um, include it for clarity. Chris, um, firstly, who, who approves this, the, the schedules? The schedules. Schedules. Schedules are approved by council, but they don't need to go out for consultation. Right. The, the only clarification, real clear, was was what what do you mean by signage provisions? Um. So it, having sorry. it says the specification of vehicles, e.g., size, weight of vehicle, and signage provisions. What 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 is meant by that? Uh, so signage. so many. Many other councils require that um, any companies that are collecting waste have the company name on the truck. So that the reason for doing this is so that if anybody ever observes any unwanted behaviour, so you know someone dumping a load of of waste somewhere, that if it is actually a licensed operator, they've got the name of the company on the truck. Some other councils have required uh, that they have contact details on the track, perhaps, so a contact phone number or a website where people can, you know, actually find out who this company is and what they do. It's as simple as that. Oh, yeah, OK, I was just wondering whether it was, um, you know, sort of um, delineating what um, advertising you could have had on it or whatever. Right, it's, it's no. Yeah, yeah, identification. Okay. Yeah. That's right. So, are you comfortable with the that minor amendment about vehicles and that the health and safety be captured in the schedule? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have obviously a recommendation here that the information. If there's no other comment, uh, question: uh, Information be received that the um, the 2017 bylaw be re revoked. That we determine, council determines that in accordance with the um, section 1551 of the <coughs> Local Government Act of Bylaw is the most appropriate way of addressing safe problems. And four council determines that solid waste management and minimisation bylaw 2023, including the minor amendments proposed, meets the requirements of section 155 of the Local Government Act. And that Yep. Sorry, sorry, I thought you were referring just to the, the, the like this part of it. You're referring to the whole waste management act side yes. of things. Uh, 
I, I said one or two more questions. Oh, sorry. Is that okay? Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I thought you were just going on the, yeah. this, no. little, this little point. Um, one of the other things that was brought up um, from one of the guys that came through, one of the construction guys, um, which I take as point, this this bylaw was, um, it looks like it's pointed at a lot of commercial waste and writing plans around commercial waste. Um, I, I take the guy's point in the fact that the big sheds, like it's picking up on things that are over 500 square metres or something like that. Um, a lot of those commercial sheds, which are just sheds, don't really have a lot of um, waste. Um, and this doesn't pick up on residential building, which I think some of the comments around here were that, you know, they didn't think maybe it went too far enough. I think like residential houses can make a lot more construction waste than some of those um, commercial bikes can. Um, I'll back you up, Dave, because um, I, 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 I think the question was why, it's just, why is it just commercial? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, so can you give some like, clarification, please? Sure. So it, it's definitely not intended to just restrict that provision to commercial building projects at all. The the number that was included in the bylaw is a, a project value. It's not a size, it's a project value. So it means that any building project that is over that value would be captured by the provision. Now, the the intention when those those um, bylaw clauses were originally developed by all of the councils of the Waikato and Bay of Plenty regions, the intention of putting in that project value limit was so that every single house, small house build and renovation project wasn't captured by that provision. And the reason for that was because they felt like that was going to be quite a significant administrative burden to put on a single house build project, but also it was felt that the waste minimisation potential for those single house builds was probably fairly fairly limited compared to some of the really big ones. So um, the, the councils all agreed that they were going to introduce a, a project value limit. There's nothing stopping someone working on a lower value construction project from following the templates that we're going to provide and, and taking a site waste management plan approach, but we didn't feel it was appropriate to require that for every single lower value building project. Well, I'm, I'm still not convinced, right? Um, so if we look at um, <coughs> page 12, council received around uh, feedback around it, all right, for construction for non-residential building work, right, of 500,000 or higher. Now, I, 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 can, I, can, I hear you, are you saying there's a lot of administration work, but um, to say that it, there's nothing to stop people from from following it, um, I, I'm lost. I, 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 Wait, you, so either, you, like either have, yeah. you either have a five hundred thousand dollar limit, and as Dane says, um, residential stuff can put out an awful lot of uh, rubbish. Look, I agree with you. I think you're right, Bruce. We should take out the commercial. It should just be the value. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons why we're doing that, and Lisa will support me on this, is we're going to have no choice. Yes, it's going to be introduced by central government, and it's going to be introduced through um, Ministry of Business Innovation. So let's put it in. There. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they're going to require that as part of a building consent, and that's why that link um, on the documentary that talked about the amount of waste generated. Um, on the Sunday program, actually highlighted the amount of waste and managed it better. And so we really have no choice. So we might take out the commercial and include any build yeah. over five thousand dollars. If it's a shed that's got waste streams, it will be very simple, very simple to implement. Why not, Lisa? So does that yeah. yes. Especially with you know all of the templates and the guidance and the case studies that we're planning to put together to help them to comply with that requirement. I, I completely agree with you, Louisa. Yeah, and I think there are already some builders starting to do that work anyway. Peter. Mm -hmm. So if commercial disappears, then that means anybody who's building a house, you have the construction site, waste management and minimisation plan. Correct. If over 500,000 people, that yep. would be a lot. 
Yes. But yeah. there's a lot of construction waste. We have to address that issue. Mm -hmm. That's quite a big change in my mind. It's going to affect a lot of people. That's quite a big change to what was um, available for submissions. I think it's coming from the government anyway. We'll be if, if we didn't put it in now, when is how would that affect us coming forward from the government if our policy doesn't reflect that? Uh, so, as Louisa said, the the revision of the Building Act that's currently being worked on right now is intended to include a requirement for construction site waste management plans. We don't know exactly what thresholds they might set in the Building Act, but also it it would mean that uh, Matamata Piako as a district would not be consistent with your neighbouring councils in the Waikato and Bay of Plenty. Um, I think a lot of the submissions that came through around these these construction requirements, they demonstrated concern about how difficult it would be to comply with them. And I understand that. And I think the, the way we address that is to reassure them that there will be guidance, there will be templates that they can use, you know, standard um, quantity surveyor information so that they can forecast their waste really easily, guidance and case studies from other areas, and we, we will make it as easy as we can for them to comply with this. Any further comment? If it was a bull day and, and Kent goes out with, with this plan for submissions, and it's not going to affect me because I bought just houses. And then I, I read in the plan that's approved that it's going to affect me and going to affect my house building program. I, what what um, right to apply it as a, as a building firm have? So I guess the question there is around the, the cost of building a house. Oh, well, and because that's the thing, is it is it, is it, lay, is it adding a layer of complexity? Well, you, one could argue that actually some of that construction waste shouldn't be going to landfill, that it could actually be yeah. diverted. That's that's the that's the challenge around this mm. whole conversation right, of construction but, but, waste. But Peter's Peter's yeah. um, really saying we went out for consultation on one thing, and, and are we changing it mm. part way through? And, and they haven't had a say. Mm. Is that what you're saying, Peter? Yeah, yeah pretty much. It and, it and next. Next add on question is what's it going to cost yes, my sir. building firm to do one of these plans? Yeah, if I can comment on both of those. So um if, if you if you are making a change to the bylaw and, and you're right, it's going to affect a specific sector in a way that they perhaps weren't anticipating. Uh, one option available to you is that you could make that change as a proposal to that sector specifically. It doesn't mean going through another full consultative process because you can you can consult specifically with that targeted sector. So it's um, a much simpler way to resolve that issue. If you did want to go back out to them, you could do that. Um, as far as the the burden of completing a site waste management plan, and it's it's really very very simple. Uh, I've I've um, I've worked on site waste management plan projects for very very large construction sites and once they're able to see how it fits in with their project management process and their materials ordering um and where they where they can actually get all of the information from that they need to complete the plan at the end it's really very simple it's it's usefulness is in prompting them to sit down at the end of a project and think did we actually do what we said we were going to do uh, we didn't why did we not and what's going to help us to actually do that on our next project. So it's just trying to drive that um, consideration at the end of a project about what they could have done better and then to build that into the next one really is, is it's not onerous. Thank you, Lisa. So does that appeal to people to perhaps put that provision in that we consult with that sector? I'd like to make the comment that it's also going to allow the sector to reduce their costs because it's going to have an alternative pathway for materials other than landfill where we know mm. the costs are increasing. Mm. Maybe because government as part of the emissions reduction plan because they're saying that CNG waste is responsible for 15 percent of greenhouse gas emissions. <coughs> okay. So that's things like wood, etc. so forth, but plastic is responsible for environmental pollution. Okay, so 
you know, it can actually save them money by diverting their materials to other uses rather than landfilling it. Uh, and I would guess when you implement this too, you don't come down like a sledgehammer, right? There's there's a there's a time period of training and working with them and education to get them to come up to speed. Like it's not mm. right tomorrow you start doing this or, or else, is it? And it is a bylaw. Correct. Yes. And what we will do is we will provide advice and assistance to people. And that might be that Lisa or someone else, we've got waste levy funds to actually support that activity. And so what we want to do is grow people's skills and knowledge and allow them to operate in a different way. Dennis Bellamy does have uh, full meetings with the builders within our district uh, annually, and I think that would be a good opportunity to uh, uh, capture uh, and uh, assist the builders in understanding what yeah. may be required. So I just can't recall what time of the year he normally does it, but uh, I think it's in a quieter period. And mm. um, we would uh, link that into uh, Dennis's meeting. Bruce, and if, just, if just, I can, just, sorry, you go, Lisa. I just just to to add to that, the one of the next things that we're going to be doing for you as part of this project is to develop an, an enforcement strategy to support the implementation of the bylaw. And what that will enable us to set out really clearly is if you don't comply with this particular requirement, this is the enforcement approach that we plan to take. And for a construction site waste management plan, for example, that enforcement approach, approach would be very much a supportive approach. You didn't comply with this require, requirement why did you not did you did you not have access to the templates that we've provided you? Do you not know how to use them? Can we can we step you through them? You know, it's not going to be going out and say, right, you didn't do a site waste management plan on your first project after the bylaw came in. We're now going to prosecute you. That's that's not a reasonable approach to take. I mean, that will never happen in this case because you won't get your building consent if you don't have one of these anyway. So everybody who you need to will obviously get one as part of their consent process, won't they? Well, not not under the not under the bylaw. Um, we we do not know yet whether the requirement for site waste management plans in the Building Act is going to be compulsory, or if it's going to be uh, preferred. So if it's only preferred, then it will not be conditional on their consent that they have one. But we have to just watch that, watch the space on the on the building act because we we don't know what's going to happen. So, any further comment of what well, what direction of travel you want to take? Just just a clarification: if we don't put it in, right, and they change the building act or, um, in twenty twenty seven, what's the process we have to do? It? Do we have to do an amendment to the bylaw? I don't believe so because we we have said in your bylaw that um, the various requirements are conditional to the Building Act, the Waste Minimisation Act, and so any any changes that come through in new iterations of those acts would naturally be followed through in your bylaw as well. But um, maybe one way to approach this is to is to take the non-residential um, words out of the bylaw and then subsequently make it clear that council plans to take quite a transitional implementation approach with the construction site waste management plans. And that can be done in a fairly informal way but can make it clear that, you know, it is going to be a really supportive approach and potentially, you know, you might pick off projects over a million to start off with and then later on pick up projects that are over 500,000. But what that will do is it will get your bylaw through and then the detail is in the implementation. Sure. Um, can I just have some clarification, please, on how council is going to track what an independent contractor is going to do in terms of conflicting with council's policies? Like, do, you, do they have to provide data back to council to say they've got this amount of waste happening this month or with a frequency of it? Exactly. Yes, I will. 
Mm. And another project that we're working on for all of the councils of the Bay of Plenty and Waikato region at the moment is to um, set up a an information management system that will take care of all of that. Uh, so if Matamata Piako does decide that they are going to license operators, then very soon there will be a database available to, to support that system and also an administrator. And the idea is to make it as simple as possible for waste operators to become licensed and to understand what conditions they need to comply with depending on where they are. And um, because we have so many waste companies that work across districts, you know, the, the waste managements and the Enviro Waste and Smart Environmentals, they will only need to be licensed through one central portal, but it will cover all of the Bay of Plenty and Waikato regions. Thank you, thank you. So, Russell. I just got one on the event. Um, is a significant event. Louisa. Well, we might have to take the same approach with events as we're taking with the building. Um, uh, with the CMD waste. The idea is, is that um, what we will do is we'll work with people on different events as and when they happen because some, some of the events are quite different. We do have one where crews in and then they start um, pulling up the Little bins in the street and things like that. So our expectation is, is that um, we'll try and manage that a lot better. And again, what we'll do is we'll work with people, give them resources, support them, and potentially have what other councils do. They have event equipment available that people can actually use when they're running an event. Okay? And we can fund that as well and help people work through running events more effectively so we don't end up with a lot of this stuff. Okay. Every event's quite different. Yeah. And I guess that could come out of the waste minimisation levy. Yes. Yes. And if, if I can yeah. just add to what Louisa said, we, we did have some conversations when we were preparing the draft wording for the bylaw, whether we should actually specify what is considered a significant event in the bylaw itself. The alternative is to do it through a schedule. And we felt that that was more appropriate. So once the bylaw has been adopted, we can then set um, even potentially thresholds. Um, but often what other councils have done is they've specified a number of a number of um, attendees. It qualifies something as being a significant event if, say, if they've got over you know 500 attendees or 800. But what you can also say is that any multi-day event is by definition, a significant event. Okay, Kevin. Um, I, I understand the concept of this. I'm just a little bit dubious about the fact that we went out with not non-residential being in there, and now we're going to turn that completely around. Um, does it have to be 500,000? Is that a central government figure? No, it's not a central it's, government it's, figure. It's um, a number that was come up with by the... Uh, councils of the Waikato and Bay of Plenty when we were developing this wording, and and they that, that their feeling was that they would they wanted to try and exclude those small building projects that they felt there was relatively little benefit from including in the requirements, and so thinking about the types of building consent applications that you get and what value they are, it was agreed that a $500,000 construction project was probably about where they wanted that threshold to sit. I guess it's about being consistent with our neighbouring yeah. districts. Mm -hmm. I'm, 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 just, I'm yep. just looking around at, 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 our, at our district at the moment, the number of residential housing projects we have on the, on, the, on the go at the same time. If that continues, that's going to make a huge administration cost for, for, for council to work through all those waste management plans for for basically a, a, a house build up to maybe eight hundred thousand dollars. I mean, it, that's every house build that that's happening. Louisa, would you like to comment to that? I agree with you on that. Um, however, I think and Lisa will agree we are going to be in a situation where we have no choice. And I think one of the things about the Bible, there aren't a lot of changes to this new Bible. Um, the existing Bible that we have. Right? Yeah. Um, 
it's just a slight update. There's no other changes. But we have to understand that, yes, it is a growing area. Yes, it is a significant um, area that the central government's playing a large role in, and we're certainly going to have to adapt and change to that. I think all councils are finding the same thing, and that's why the government will be providing more funds. We have had clarification on the waste minimisation and levy funds that would be available to us and others. Um, although it still has to go through the select committee process. And that means that we will have funds where we can work with and assist people. It's just, you know, we, we, we really have no choice. We can we can delay everything and decide we're not going to do anything at all, or we can get ahead of the game and start positioning ourselves so we're well placed for what's coming up in the future. Would you like to add to that? Lisa, no. Okay, yeah. so it's going to look like I know we've got a huge amount to get through today. Uh, Louisa, can we have a chat about the chamber being charged with things that's sensitive? Oh, sorry, sorry about secret. what? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, uh, Gary. I just wanted to reflect on the events uh, definition and consider what, how that might apply to Tanya. But some of those can go 300 to 1,000 people over a period of time. All those types of events need to be covered. Uh, it's events on it's events on um, public property. Yeah, not, not really. Okay. Uh, I was going to say with the, I, I get where you're coming from, and it's certainly a change, and I think that you know, we might have to go back and have a meeting with residential builders about say we're doing it, but I kind of feel like if we, if we leave it for now, we're going to be in the rush with everybody bringing this rule in down the track. This way we can go through a slightly more transitional phase of doing it at council's convenience. So it might be that, like I say, you pick a million dollars to start with so, so the team can get up to speed to work out how they deal with that, you know, that paperwork that is required. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And when the actual and, and we know that when central government will come on with this stuff, it will be a sledgehammer. And you'll be mm -hmm. there trying to trying to That's compete up. with the other councils around the place, all trying to work out their paperwork at the same time. Yeah. So I mean I they might not like it um necessarily, but I kind of feel like for everybody's benefit, it's a bit of a lead-in <laughs> period that will put us ahead of the game of everybody else that's trying to do the same thing. Yeah, and I think it'll put the builders in a better position too because of that time mm. factor. And, and they're not flat out right now. It's probably a better time for them to deal with it than it might maybe be two years down the track when they go to implement it, you know, and that's uh, it's more paperwork and I'm flat out again. Jane, cool. And just some clarification about consistency with our neighbouring councils. So they've set a cap of $500,000 for non-residential. No, not necessarily. No, many of your neighbours include residential projects as well. Okay, sweet. Okay. So can that, we have that, a... that figure, Lisa? The figure is the same. Right. Being conscious of time, we need to make a decision here. Are you comfortable with making a decision? Um, do you want to add in that we will um, speak with the building community or are we going to yeah. do it and speak with them? I'm comfortable with what's um, with the chase we've posed so long and, and the justification for that is gone as it's already said that Dennis speaks with all the builders yes. annually anyway, mm -hmm. so long as it's explained to them at that meeting. So we can see so quite happy for the non-commercial to be added in there that it's just by 500,000 mm. construction. So with that amendment. Did you want to, just to clarify that, did you want to seek feedback from the building community or just explain the change? So I think we need to really explain it and, and not and, and do it in a way that it's not a sledgehammer mm. coming on them now. Transitional. It's transitional. Yeah. Because obviously we won't be able to enforce it for some time. So. Mm. Yeah, so I think that will be the note is that we will, because of the slight change, because at the end of the day, a lot of builders are building commercial as well. It's not like they just do houses, some do mm. commercial. So, yeah, that's cool. Right, so going through from, um, I started reading before around the one through to four with the, the law. I think you can all will have read it. Um, in option five, that we've obviously listened to the um, committees. So number six is the key one, that council adopt the solid waste management and minimisation bylaw with a minor amendment clarifying the definition around vehicle specification. And then also we will include um, the non-commercial, just be $500,000 um, 
Yep, yep. Cool. Um, so with the removal of non-residential in reference to the building work with an estimated value of five hundred thousand dollars or higher, yeah. added into that recommendation. Yep, that's what we Yep, and and that staff be given delegation to approve minor um, proofing and grammatical changes. That's number seven. Do we need? We don't. I don't think we need to add any of them. Or should we add them that that um, staff that will staff will be talking to the builders? I think that's probably good. In the time of yeah. change, and if you're not seeking feedback from that community, you can just go to inform them of the changes and work yeah. with them. No, no, it's a good way to say that council's <coughs> thank you. To this. So can we add something to that effect? Yeah. I've got one here. Um, staff to work with the building community to explain the change with particular regard to the five hundred thousand dollar limit. Threshold. Threshold. Yeah. So is everyone happy with that? Yep. Is it someone happy to move? Oh, so the, the last one, we, we kind of touched on it, but we didn't finish on it. But with, uh, I had the same oh, question. Oh, so going to be? Yeah, yeah, with Russell. And, and I get that you're going to go back to, um, you know, so, somewhere else to do it. Sometimes, you know, I guess that's a bit of a roll your eyes thing for the person that's trying to go through and find the answers quickly. If you know roughly what you're going to do at 500 people or multi-day events, can we not do that as a little bit of a thing in this, like we are with the rubbish truck? And so back to Michael, it was, I should have made a statement by the question, are we charging and what the charge would be for that? That's what I was trying to get to. No, I don't think we'll charge for that. What we'll do is we'll work with them. We can provide funds so that they can actually manage that waste in a better way. Because at the moment, we're, we're paying the cost incidentally anyway. Um, like, say, for example, at the Domain House, we deliver some bins up there and hey, we just go and pick them up and then they go and take them and dispose of the material. Okay. This way we can get a bins equipment in place where the waste can be separated and be picked up by a commercial contractor and we can help by paying that cost. Yeah, no charge to the event? Yes, that's okay. no charge. Okay. okay. So we can give grants and things to people like that. And what, what it also does is it encourages people to move the more environmentally friendly packaging, et cetera, and so forth. All right. Okay. So that's one of the things that there's a lot of templates and there's a lot of examples um, of events, uh, waste management situations. Okay. So, yeah, that's the sort of thing. They can apply for next month places. Well, we did Waitangi um, Browns three years in a row, and that's really grown now. And that's a significant number of people. So you can actually do it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know that we need to get hung up on the No, 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 I'm just saying, no, yeah, 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 we yeah. need to know what we're going to do. Yeah, well, I think significant is where you're looking at a big event, you know, it's not just a 21st or a, a yeah. you know, it's a monthly market week that road closures involved. Well, I think that what we can do at the monthly market is, yeah, and we see that on all the small townships like our own at the moment, is provide them equipment so they can do that separation. For example, and I'm going to come and bring some other stuff to you. Um, we have funded um, the Navi Kilometre with a, a carbon um, composting system, and they can take food waste there. In fact, they're already um, composting on their food waste. And they are looking for door outlets where they can actually go. So it's getting people to separate materials out, which means that they can take that food waste and food scraps. The recycling is free, and one would hope there'd be a very small amount of rubbish, and that would actually be, um, again, a lower cost to them. Right. Sorry, Sorry. So, 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 so I guess the question we've got to answer is are we happy to just refer to a separate, separate, separate schedule for that? Yes. Or do we want to give a couple of examples? In that to get people to kind of think well, about So I think with policies, no, I think got something to add. If we look at the definition of event that's been included in the bylaw, yes. there's actually some examples of this. So it says any organised temporary activity on a significant scale and or occurring over multiple days that's likely to create a litter, including an organised gathering, an open air market, parade, protest, festival, film, film shoot, concert, or celebration. Okay. So, so that, I think that covers it pretty well. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, so yeah. And I think, at least I can confirm that, um, a lot of things can be changed without coming back and reviewing yeah. the bylaws schedule. So that will also include the amendments to the Litter Act. That's correct, isn't it? Yeah, because yeah. the Litter Act is being amended. Kevin, you had a comment? Yeah, I just want I just want a clarification. Are we leaving non-residential building work in there or is it just going to be for building work with an estimated? Yeah, 
Very important. And that they will meet when Dennis has his meetings with the builders, he will talk it through with them. It's not so, a sledgehammer, it's a process just to get. get so we're just taking the, word, taking the word non residential out of there completely. Mm -hmm. Is that yes. what you're saying? Under, yeah, she referred to that just before. <laughs> So, are we ready to move on with this? Mm -hmm. I think we've thrashed it out yep. quite thoroughly and really have come to a good good mm -hmm. position. Happy to take that time. So, somebody happy to move that those eight points because we're going to obviously discuss with um, Caleb. Yeah, I'm happy to move all eight of those points. So the eight pointers around um, meeting with the builders. Thank you. A seconder. Yeah. Thank you, Dave. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against, Carrie. Thank you, Lisa. Me. Thanks, Louisa. Thank it's you. It's a piece of work. Thanks. Can, can you put me up against, please? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, oh, yeah. just because of that word. Oh, so you're against the edit. Yeah, the, just, um, just, just, against, just against the edit. Oh. It's not something we, we went out with. I think it's a, it's a complete reversal of what we went out with. So. That's all. That's all. Okay. We're good. Yep. Okay. Item number 7.2 is the adoption of, thanks Lisa, adoption of the provisional LAP, the alcohol policy. Um, we obviously had some discussion around our um, current opening time of off licences and there's documents so, over here, really. Yeah, so. Um, So yeah, so we have the adoption there, and we just have about the opening app, which is probably the significant one. Our current LAP for off licences is from seven till nine, and we went out with seven a.m. to eleven p.m. And now I think our submissions have given us some feedback on that. Um, on that, everything else is pretty um, straightforward. So just any discussion on that, please. I think we'd be. Shooting ourselves in the foot by going from from seven to nine to seven to eleven. I think nine to nine being consistent across every off license store, be that a supermarket, your liquor land, whatever it is, we should be completely consistent because we don't want the supermarket staying out until eleven just to sell booze. And we don't want we don't want to create more problems in our district that relate to alcohol. If we I mean, I'm told on whether whether that's the role of the like, government to control people's habits, but we do have a responsibility of care to our district. And I think we'd be shooting ourselves in both feet and then trying to walk if we went from seven if we went to seven to eleven, nine to nine across every off license. And that's the fairest way of going about it. So everyone's subject to the same conditions. And that way there can't be any claim that we're favouring one part of the economy market or then I or another. I think it's just it's protecting ourselves and being consistent at the same time. Sarah Jane. I don't agree that it should be nine to nine. I think it should it should be seven yeah, to nine. The current, um, the current, current yeah, current, the current and it's, yeah. I mean most of our supermarkets are open eight. either seven or eight. Yeah. So okay. yeah. Okay. But I would like to see it, yeah. Both. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so with that amendment, is there any further comment? Have you got anything to add? I think that was the main um, point that, that came across. There were a couple of other comments around um, uh, the on licenses. So we've made that um, proposed amendment to uh, restrict on licenses to the business owners, but that's not a hard and fast provision. It's just um, should. Um, so there is flexibility there. Um, it's a, it's a um, it's a preference clause, so that doesn't prevent um, on licences from opening in, in other areas. Yeah. We listened to one submitter on that, and I think that's actually yeah. a relevant point. You know, yeah. Okay. Kate Bay at Lockerbie will. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think. Um, it's a huge document. Yeah, yeah there were some um, concerns that any new clauses would, uh, would affect um, renewals, and actually they're in the policy they are exempt. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So if there's no comment, Kevin, you've got nothing to comment on. With that, we will um, 
And so we've got the, the information we received that we can councils consider all the um, submissions and that the decisions on the LA can possibly be incorporated into the submissions hearing document, promoting why submitters and publication on the council website. Council adopt the provisional LAP with amendment to the maximum trading hours of the off services. So that was the what we're reversing, because that was what we went out with. Okay. So we are so changing number four. Yeah. And got that change noted, Sandra? Sorry, it's a question of report. It's a question of report. There's no linking down the service. Seven to one. Okay. okay. That would be for all off yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And okay. staff and delegation approved minor approving and grammatical so changes. James. Yeah, so I'm just like the, the change of hours, like we're also like overall we're increasing the hours that the a non supermarket off licenses can pay, correct? Yeah. By going to seven to nine, we aren't increasing because that's the current that's policy. Right. Yeah. It was not nine to nine. No. 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 And that's what we proposed, wasn't oh, right. it? Just it. But, yeah. Yeah. So the current policy in the, in the moment is seven to nine for all off licenses. And we propose that for supermarkets and bottle stores to extend that um, so from seven till eleven. Yeah. And all other off licenses from nine till nine. Uh, but the propo the um, provisional policy we're uh, suggesting to revert back to the current the, um, current one. Yeah. Um, noting that this is a provisional policy and now goes out for uh, an appeal process. Um, Thirty day. 30 day appeal process, and from then, um, obviously, it depends what we may be appealed. Mm. Um, yeah, so there is a bit of a process to actually for this policy to actually come into force. Yeah, um, just comments, Peter. Supermarkets in our district, they will shut at nine or before. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. yeah. So uh, no, sorry, I was just going to move. I was very impressed when I, I sort of hadn't really thought about what would happen if we did extend it and it meant that they would open longer, they would be paying more people, whatever. So I took that on board and uh, yeah, very much I'm happy to move. Let's do move. Seconded. Yeah, I'm happy to second that. You're seconding it, Caleb. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Anyone against? Carried. Thank you. He was four and he was thumbs up. It's <laughs> all right. Here. Um, we can move to the item 7.3, the adoption of the speed management plan. Yeah, please, 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 there's no linkage to documents here. 35, please. I got it. <laughs> okay, so this was a uh, Flex Berry present to this. Good morning. Excuse me. So it's oh. Yeah, that's still in the... Take it away, Gary. Okay, can you hear me right? Yep. Um, so today is a really important day in terms of um, making progress with speed management plan getting up across the line. Just look back on, the, on my file. Um, and we started this back in March last year, so it's 14 months of uh, solid work. So um, I just want to thank and acknowledge um, Jeanette Underwood. She's maybe listening in um, from Lake McCarthy Consultants. She's been, uh, um, you know, very uh, instrumental in making the pulling all this information together, um, and also the schools. Kura and Marai that we've met with um, support from the uh, from our asset strategy and policy team, SPAG Communications GIS, and also of course um, government support from councillors Thomas and Juhus to put the um, town centre information etc. and all of the school work together. Um, so today we're recommending that the adoption of the interim speed management planning. Um, there were a couple of issues raised through consultation, but they're not insurmountable. And we are expected to do reviews as, on an ongoing basis. So it's not not that this is the only opportunity. So we have a regular periodic opportunity to get in there and make um, 
uh, future changes. Um, the timing scope, um, in terms of connecting with other work that we're doing, we've got our transport choices, we've got our, um, we've got another a number of other um, accessibility related works, etc., on the go at the moment. Politically, it's good time. Um, we also want to make sure it gets funded. Um, so certification enables the work to be costed tightly with uh, long term planning and our work programs to be fully considered. Um, <coughs> we'll reach out to the police, what Cote NZTA as we do on a regular basis, and also our customers through our responses to these submissions. Um, and fans have been in touch with what we're taking. Fans are um, talking at a high level with what they are taking currently. And we'll keep an eye on that because we do understand their concerns, but we have to balance them against what we're trying to achieve. So, yeah, so that's essentially what was summary. Any comments? Yeah. Yes, so um, just a statement. I'm very happy that I'm going to get a car that's going to tell me what the road code is because when you run through them, one's 40, one's 30, one's 60, one's 70, and you're all over the place. But I guess that's what it is. That, that's my that's my um, job tomorrow. So when I drive up to a Fiji Peninsula, um, I have no idea what the, what, the, what the speeds are. And I've got pinged last time as well. <laughs> so I must find out where that's going to be. Anywho, um, I, I, I just had a comment. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to, to support and move this. Um, just, I, it was around the, uh, and I know this is not part of this discussion, with you, but just about the Whitey Road, you know, how. Yeah. how um, oh, neighbouring district. Yeah, I, I, I'd like to, because it was almost a fate of complete, because it, they came to us from Haraki saying, Haraki's doing this. Yeah. And and I, I would like to, I don't know how we do this, but to encourage when we're doing this neighbouring road stuff. I'd like to have some dialogue with those councils before they go, or or, or before we go. Here's, here's the speed, because I just think we might have ended up at a 90 D. I don't know. I know you would disagree with that, but but um, that might be where that where it fell. Whereas you know it came to us and 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 we and we went with the consistency of their approach. Yeah. Um, I just wonder. How, I don't know how that can work, but yes. that would be my concern going forward, Barry. No, that's fine. Um, we set ours at 80 along with them, basically because we didn't really get that consistency. Yeah. And Jeanette has been uh, preparing Karaki's speed management plan as well. Okay. So that's where she knows the need for consistency. And also our section was just over three k's long. So it seems uh, inappropriate to change our speed for the sake of three k's. Oh, no, and I, and I agree with that. It was just whether we ended up you know, if dialogue with Haraki, yeah. and I ex uh, accept that Jeanette's in the middle of all that, but whether yeah. we might have ended up at a, at a 90 example. Oh, okay. And and have Haraki approved it, because that's going to be the thing. If they don't approve it, then we go with 80. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, the, again, it's yeah, going to yeah. be consistent. Yeah. Haraki, Haraki have, my understanding, because their, their plan's been certified, they're actually up okay. for review. So earlier the question back to me was, when can we review speed management planning? Well, Jeanette has just told me that Herrick is 12 months into theirs, so it's been signed off, but they're going through another review. So you can do it as frequently as you like, but obviously there's a lot of work involved, so you have to pick your time. So uh, what's the time frame from a waiting rate? I'm frozen, so I can't. But I think it's just something that we consider and keep in the back of our mind, and if it continues to be a, an issue that you want to raise, we can, we can throw it back in the mix and discuss and debate it and go from there. Yeah. Cool. Peter. Just just to clarify the, the position regarding Grafton Road. So Samita yeah. mentioned Grafton Road and, and I read here staff recommended that targeted consultation with community be undertaken in time for the next SMP reviewed. Yeah. So what's the time frame for that? Uh, we haven't set a time frame, but basically it can be anywhere between now and in three years time. So it's really up to um, our council to decide when is appropriate time and discussion with staff. Or, or, or perhaps people who live on Grattan Road who decide it's really unsafe and Scott Reverse and they'll come to you or council and say, look, you need to address this now. So is the possibility of we I think it's fair that we can keep working on it in the background. Yep. We, we can review we, what we're looking at is the one network framework. We have to consider our whole network. So we we we're going away from an approach of treating roads individually. 
It's more about how one road feeds into another road, etc. So we want to be mindful that we want to set the right speed for that type of road to make sure it's fulfilling its function. So yeah, so we'll keep a watch on these things for sure. There's no question about yeah. that. I think the priority at the moment is the schools, yeah. which I think I think yeah. everybody agrees Absolutely. is the key thing, and yeah. then you work out from there. That's right. Sarah Jane. Um, so the approach you're taking with Grattan Road is that also the same for Avenue Road? Um, yeah, very much. Yeah. Yeah. Because Avenue Road South is um, arguably up for a bit more development in the near future, yeah. but we don't want to be um, we don't want to go and change a lower speed if it's not necessarily required until we've done our investigation. Uh, we don't know the impacts on, on that um, um, side of road development at this stage. And if, it, if, it, if we see a lot of vulnerable users um, taking advantage of that location, then we may have to go back and consider it. Yeah. Russell. Um, well done on all the work, Mary. It's taken a while. Yeah, um, yeah, the yeah. only comment I've got to make, it's taken 14 months so far, yeah. and it's going to be another 16 months before the speed management plan um, starts to be implemented. Why is such a big long time before we see a speed limit change outside of school? Um, it's mainly around just tying in with our um, National Land Transport Program um, you know, cycles. Mm -hmm. So we've chosen the when July 24 is the start date because it ties in with our long term planning, etc. Um, I wouldn't say that nothing will happen between now and then, but there'll be planning going on and cost things put together, etc. between now and then. There's, there is a lot of work going on in the background. It's just what you see in terms of the actual work program. So you won't see any physical improvements uh, for a period of time because they actually need to be costed and funded and, and then we get ready to go. Yep. Bruce. Which is possibly what I'm. Hey, I, I know how much work's done, and I've yeah. seen what you're doing. Yeah. Road to zero. Yeah. You say interim target is 40% reduction in deaths. So it started in 2018. So we're five years in. But what's the statistics saying now? We have we got 20% reduction? No, I don't think they've achieved at this stage. No. But, but you know. These are these are targets to obtain, and it's a collective response. So all count. Yeah, I, I, I know it's not your fault. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we won't blame you. Page thirty-seven. Yeah. You say uh, it, it's in here. Um, carefully selecting positions with speed and safety cameras. Can you define what a safety camera is? So there are new camera technologies that enable them to basically see into vehicles to see whether people are using cell uh -huh. phones. Yeah. No, no, just just wondering yeah. what the definition. So this will be on a phone or not? And will that be on highways? Or like <laughs> speed cameras are only allowed to be on highways at the moment, so... I don't know enough right about right. the detail. It's been worked on between what yeah, and... It's not our gig, it's that's natural gig. Uh, just a couple of just yeah. points just to raise. Um, it's Peria Road, not Peria Street. Um, and on, that was page somewhere, page 58, that Walton School 60K is at least variable. Next to it, it's just your grammatical stuff. Oh, awesome. And um, yeah, Morris for Tahuna Road for Waltham. I think it's the Morris for Waltham Road that's meant to be um, on page 28. Because Tahuna's at the other side of Morris for doesn't really relate to, to Waltham with um, the connection to the speed. See, just those grammatical things. So you're looking at the, the documentation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's right. Well, can, cool. can I get? Yeah, go for it. I see 61 percent. Uh, agree with uh, managing speed, mm. so I think that's that's a key factor. You know, it's a, yeah. it's a, that's a big big percentage. Yeah. Um, just scrolling through to find all my notes. Um, you you had consultation with schools, and I and I know you, and yeah. I know yeah. you did. Did they identify um, uh, some crossing places and what have you? Yes. Did they have? Yes. Yeah, and, and, do they, and do those crossing places um, figure in your ideas of what you might be able to do on the likes of Coronation Road? And Definitely, right. yeah. So we, that was a whole point going to the schools, yeah. was to make sure that we understood what the issues were. Yeah. So we documented them according to what the wishes of the school. We didn't go there with preconceived ideas. We went there to listen, and that's what we did. Yeah. 
Yeah. So what you see in the speed management plan is a reflection of what they told us. Right? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions? Uh, Susie's just got a comment. Yeah, sorry, I was just going to clarify, and um, we do actually have funding in this year's budget and next year's budget. So we've, um, under the Wokakotahi funded road to zero funding, we've included speed management. So we actually have 400,000 as of yes, July. So we're targeting some of those scores. So it's not just putting up signs, but it's actually doing the infrastructure as well. So like on Stanley, doing a road crossing, um, some traffic harming and, and yes, yeah, so we've got about just I think even more, sorry, at least four hundred thousand dollars in our approved funding from Waka Co Tag for 23-24 and then the speed management will fit into and um, that, that sounds good because my, my the other last comment I was gonna make was what what work has been provisionally yeah. budgeted for. So that's that's your answer. So oh, Caitlin. Very quickly, um the cameras that look into people's cars when they're driving along are those the central government's initiative that we'll have to take on board. Are on those something that we're looking to do independent of central government? Yeah, as I mentioned before, I don't know enough about it at this stage, but I know that Waka Tahi is working with suppliers of camera technologies. So policing will carry on. It will become more targeted around notable areas requiring targeted policing. So some of the information we've gathered as part of this process will be fed on to the police to say these, these are trouble spots that we've picked up as a result of our work. So we can we can we can encourage that. But over and above that, there is what Kotahi is working with councils plus the supplier of speed te um, camera technology to look at fixed locations. Interesting. So yeah. mm. righty. to just come to put our um, guests in the in the chamber now, James. Yeah, yeah. So okay, so one three to four. Yep. With those grammatic things. So I have a seconder. Yes, thanks, Russell. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Carried. Against. Everyone's carried. Yep. Carried. Right. We'll now jump to item 7.6, which is our staff long purpose presentation. Mm -hmm. We have Mike Van B. Mike. Um, with his long service recognition of 40 years service to my HPR co-district. Why, why Sheree, uh, and the mayor, who they have a driving force in Mike's uh, <laughs> career in life and uh, 40 years for 70, a very long time. And I asked uh, Debbie to look up what did Mike start as just and often when we see people have been here 40 years, they sort of wander around the building getting different experiences, uh, trying different things out and, and uh, settling into a particular uh, role after 40 years. Uh, Mike started as, as an engineer, and he's still an engineer. Yay. So uh, I know you have worked for KGS at one stage, Mike. Oh, well, that was Tell some kind of things. Yeah. Well, I started, um, actually, interesting enough, um, to get this job, I never had an interview for it. You might not be doing for the employee It came about because um, I, I was um, going to study at Waikato Tech to do civil engineering, and um, during the summer holidays, I actually did some milking for uh, then councillor Colin Knight, um, and Colin saw what I was wanting to do. Came to council and says, I've got this young guy, and how about taking him on as a cadet? And so I actually got a cadetship here um, with council. That's right. And that's how I started here. So uh, once I finished my year at Hamilton and I started full time here, um, spent about six months or more just surveying one lane bridges that we were going to replace over the next few years. Um, <laughs> I learned all done the ones I <laughs> Done a few more since um, then. And then um, I actually worked in Terraborough under Dave Price. Nice. And some of you all will remember. Um, so looking after what was going on in the borough council here. Um, that was pretty good. I've got a, a Shakespeare Street in town here that I surveyed, designed, and then I looked after the construction of it. And um, you know, always enjoy driving down there and seeing what I've done. Um, to rename it, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, no, <that's> right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we went a little bit over. <laughs> um, and then um, I wanted a bit of a change, and so I actually went out to um, 
uh, county's works depot at Waiau, which council did all of its um, construction and maintenance work with its own staff. We had about 30 to 40 staff there. And um, I started, went out there and basically went on a shovel and cleaning culverts and digging drains and, and whatever else and worked my way up to leading hand um, foreman, um, uh, overseer, and then after amalgamation in 89, came back and back to the office here um, to do contract management. So yeah, done a bit of a full circle. Um, really enjoyed the contracts that I've looked after over the years. There's um, there's not many roads in this district that I haven't resealed at least once, probably three times. Um, so yeah, I know the network yeah, very well. Very well. <laughs> you asked Mike about any particular road or bridge or culvert, or, and he's been there and done that. And, uh, it's that sort of rich um, institutional knowledge, which I think we need to um, celebrate. Um, sometimes people think people have been too long in a particular role, but when you see um, people like Mike, who uh, brings that understanding to to the role, it's um, it's not to be it's to be admired and respected. Um, and as I say, celebrate it. Uh, so Mike, 40, 40 years, not quite as long as me, but no, uh, <laughs> might catch up. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, but um, we really do appreciate all the all the skills and uh, knowledge that you that you bring to the role. I know that um, you've really enjoyed your recent. Your, well, when did you get promoted? Then a year ago. About a year ago, I know that yeah. I, uh, I saw a, a lift in your spirit, if you like, that uh, you had uh, settled into a role which I think you'd long wanted to have. So well done. And um, I think, uh, can we call you the new Took? Or, uh, <laughs> no? New Took. Uh, it's only one of Took. Yeah, no, I know. No. And you can use computers too. So. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Mike's a go-to man. If you've got a problem, a problem on the network, you've got a, you've got a rate payer that's concerned about that particular issue, wants something uh, looked at and considered, Mike's your man. So thanks, Mike, for all your time. Thanks for all your service and your energy. and really appreciate it. And um, you might be here for a few years more, perhaps. Maybe. Yeah, Good on you. Yeah, and if I can just add, um, you know, obviously you're a value very valued member of staff, and just acknowledge the work that occurs during civil defence. Yes, of course. You know, when we're in those emergency responses, because it's our network that's actually really, really important to us, and having that knowledge is, is well, it, it makes it easier for us as a council to fulfil our, our role for the community. You know, you know where, the, where to go. He doesn't have to think about it. And, and yeah, I really appreciate that effort because there's a lot of time goes into civil defence that a lot of people don't study and it does take you away from your day to day work. So, yeah, thank you. I, I should also <coughs> mention that if you see the water fire truck going somewhere, do you still drive it? Yes. Oh, you do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. If there's a fire somewhere, uh, you'll see Mark, Mike running out of the building and <laughs> suddenly you see the water tanker roaring past mm -hmm. the office. So, I'm sure it's within the 50k speed limit, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so he does obviously contribute to the community. So, the so with that, congratulations. Yeah. Um, well, and um, yeah, welcome to your family and yes, staff, well, staff members supporting you today. Yep. And we'll break the morning tea. So, um, someone like to move that the information be received. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Seconder James, all those in favour, please say aye. 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 And Don, if you'd like, we need to do some photos, obviously, and aye, present yes. the of course. Uh, yes, certificate. Of course, yes. Thank you. Yes, so, live streaming.